you go from back to front, it, it'll show you. Here's what I did, and I do this on a regular. I think about where people fall within the pecking order of professional wrestling. Yesterday, I was very, uh, well, I had a lot of time on my hands, and so I, I ranked the 100, or from 100 to 1, of who I think is the most and least over in AEW. This then prompted me to think, and I was like, that's a little too heavy, I'm not doing that. But what I did do was I made a new list, and it is the 23 best AEW wrestlers of 2023 and the 23 best wrestlers of WWE for the year 2023. After that open rolls, we're going to break it down, we're going to talk about it, we're going to go over my ranking of the 20, from 23 to 1 in both companies. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Oz, I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. Thank you. After that, open rolls. Enjoy the video. If you could, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. I said before the open roll, it's 23 to 1. Well, there is a little caveat on both sides. I put an honorable mention for both AEW and WWE. So, my honorable mention, number 24, if you will, for Alpha Entertainment Worldwide for the year is... I mean, all Elite Wrestling. Is that what I said? No, oh, you're, I said... Yeah, you're thinking about us. Yes, you're right. So, my bad. Well, I said we should do an Alpha Entertainment Worldwide Best 23. You know, that's not a bad shout, especially given the fact that it was a heck of a year, and we pushed people in ways that they were never pushed before. Definitely so, not in reality. Yes, that's what I mean. Uh, that was a, That's a good idea. But yes, you're right. I do mean All Elite Wrestling's yeah, honorable <laughs> mention is Big Bill. I feel like Big Bill... He really brought something fresh, new, and um, exciting. exciting to the year of 2023. So, would you like to tell the people who I gave the honorable mention that coveted 24 spot for the WWE roster? I would love to, Oz, because it's it's a man who, honest to God, every time he, he's on your screen, he lights up your television. It's true. You know him. I, you I actually, him. I love his run as the fifth man in Evolution. Ooh. And and when he was announced as that fifth member of the Four Horsemen, mm -hmm. it really, really moved me. Really pieced together. That Have you been seeing all those memes? Yeah. Oh, those are some good ones. <laughs> oh, man, it's been great. But as of right now, he's, he's kicked out JD <laughs> to join the JD. We're talking about former NWA world champion, R-Truth. Ron the Truth Killings. Love, Love that him, guy. Man. Love yeah, he, he... I'm about to say, I can't think of a better honorable man. <laughs> right? So he he just has this innate ability. And uh, Caleb Braxton talked about it with Chris Van Vliet. He just has this innate ability to to light up a room. And and even Chris, he was like, man, I can't wait to talk to him. But I don't think I could get through all of his career in 10 episodes, <laughs> let alone one. Very true. And Very so... True. Uh, this I, I this just, man's really had like five people's careers. It's true, within yeah. Within like, what, three, four decades now? So the the first I remember seeing him was in two thousand and one with uh, Road Dog Jesse yeah, James. Road Dog, yeah, K Quick. But I'm sure that he had a he had at least a, a cup of coffee on the the, the independent, independent yeah. circuit. Yeah, because after he left there, is that when he went to NWATNA? It is. It is when he went to NWATNA. 
And then when he came back in, I want to say, 09. Was it 09? Man. 08, 09, somewhere yeah. in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, because yeah, what was it? 2007, 2008, he was tag champs with uh, Pac-Man? Mm-hmm. So, something like that. Yeah, so, so, you're probably right. Been, yeah, it would have been ballpark there. That's when I first saw him as, as our troop and he was like, the the guy rapping the what's up. And yeah. Like, oh, man, I'm vibing with this guy. Are you, are you on board with me that he should have won the title at Capital Punishment from John Cena? Yeah. Like, it was just such a stark contrast with from what he had been doing. I was about to say, it was it was probably the one time in his career like where he was going to be taken serious enough that he could have pulled it off. But at, at the same time, like, I mean, it's I, I knew John Cena wasn't losing. It's kind of just one of those things. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a common occurrence. It yeah. is, was, I guess. But, it yeah, it would, have, it would have been real good. I, I think he would have been a great world champion, too. Well, Even he, if it was just for a little bit. That's what I was going to say. Even if it was a short, short ride, I think it would have been a trip worth taking. For sure. So I, I'm going to break down this list in brackets or uh, sections. Piece so, by piece. So uh, on the AEW side, from 23 to 20, it goes like this. Hangman Adam Page. Next Strong, Roderick Strong. My God. <laughs> Darby Allen and Mark Briscoe. So the reason... All about the choices. The reason I picked these fellows... So... Hangman, the reason he comes in dead last is because he, he really fell off from his his era of prominence within the the top title picture. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a particular person slash reason for that, obviously. But uh, Roddy Strong, man, he is, his character work, whether it be at his house, on the ramp, wherever it is. In a wheelchair. In the, yeah, in a wheelchair, <laughs> in the backstage, whatever. Roderick Strong's character work has been so on point, uh, so much so that people speculate that he and the Kingdom are a part of the Devil's Crew. I'm one of those people. Uh, sure, that I mean, and there ain't nothing wrong with it. But I, I don't know. I feel like I would be, I would find it so much more valuable if he ended up hugging MJF and and Adam Cole when when they all link up to take out the Devil's Rejects, as I call them. I mean, I feel that. You know, his best friend by proxy, (laughs) Maxwell Jacobson. Absolutely. So, uh, Darby Allin, Daredevil, crazy man. I'm about to say, not really much you need to do to explain. Yeah, linked up with one of the greatest, and now granted, part of this comes from the era I came up, but linked up with one of the greatest of all time, that being Sting. No, I'm I'm, I'm in agreement, because I've only... See most of most of the steam work I've seen is in TNA, but still, and even I would agree with that. Absolutely, Sting. love that guy. And Mark Briscoe, he delivered absolutely. in the year of 2023 in a way that I never could have ever expected from the man, especially given you know what yeah. he was I'm fighting. What he had to go through, yes, as losing his brother at the beginning of the year, and then somehow he was also injured. I almost forgot this. Yeah, injured exactly. Yeah, in, out in the middle of the year, yeah. out for. A One significant period three, of time. four months. But the, the thing is, he just has this relatability that yeah. when he's in front of that camera, people keep, people get behind it. And I think the like his work in the Continental Classic this year really like. Here's here's here, here's something that I find so intriguing about the Continental Classic. Mm. People on the internet now that's just where you oh, see yeah. people complain, but people on the internet complain that. Oh, Mark Briscoe didn't won one match, but the, he, won, he won one match. Well, and I mean, until he just got his first victory, right? Yeah. They were complaining, at time of recording. Yes, he, they were complaining that oh, he hadn't won one match. Oh, it's so dirty, it's so bad, right? But I think that it really helps to emphasize his underdog nature, mm-hmm. the fact that you know he's still pushing strong, he's doing all he can, and he also had a really great explanation for it was. Guys, this is my this is my rookie year as a singles wrestler. Oh, I, I was about to get there. I was like, I think that's so smart. Yeah. So I'm gonna transition over to the WWE side of the bracket, give you the uh, 23 to 20 in Oz's view. We begin with a man who has not had one match in WWE this year. That being CM Punk. Uh, Charles Manson Punk. <laughs> but the the thing is. That that Cookie Monster himself, he 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 elicits a response, and sometimes he elicits a financial investment, and with that, it's just so hard to not put him on the the over list. That's very fair, and I I will say, listen, I, I I'll, I'll make my little CM Punk jokes, but I am a CM Punk fan. I just 
I'm not as invested as the first time he came back. I was going to say, I, I stopped being a CM Punk fan at Brawl Out. Yeah. That's when my, that's when my affection yeah. went away. Now, I, it, it's kind of like when, like, a lover jades you and, like... Something yeah, so I want to be, I want to be friends with him. Yeah. I want, I want to have positive feelings, but it's just hard. Yeah, I was about to say. Challenging. It's I mean. very, for my own emotions, I, like, I, I keep him at arm's length. And, smart, that's smart. And, like... Because like yeah, it's really it's really cool. It was really cool to see him back in WWE. But I like, I especially like the 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 graphics package they put on to the stage, yeah. which went over the history of his T-shirts uh, on the the Tron yeah. because it was like, you know, ECW debut T-shirt style. Then it was uh, him Money in the Money Bank style. Then it was New Nexus style, and yeah. then the Best in the World. And it was just highlighting one of the things that WWE is so great at highlighting, which is their vast ownership of intellectual saying, property. We have a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah, but what I was saying was like, because when he debuted, my reaction wasn't, oh my God, he's back in WWE. My reaction was, how long is he going to be in WWE? It's for sure, yeah, I get that. So, On that same note, another man who returned at Survivor Series, although he has had matches, is Randall, Randall Keith. Randall Keith. <laughs> Randy Randall, Orton. Randall Keith. And Again, it's it's a this is a guy who it's so hard to say anything bad about, like especially. Well, it's not hard to say anything about bad about him, but what I mean is, uh, you know, yes, he had down periods where he was, you know, yeah, uh, uh, not the greatest person. Cor- correct, but we, we've long since passed that, yeah. and you know, when you're out for eighteen months and you come back, you're gonna get that big. Especially pop. from what a. Was it back surgery or something? Yeah, it was back surgery, yeah. but do you know why he had that back surgery? Because of all the RKOs. All the RKOs, exactly, yeah. Took uh, 20 years worth of back bumps. Yeah, yeah, not good, not great. So, um, 21 and 20, I don't know, they just they both feel very surprising to me. And it, it also surprises me how many ex-AEW talents or people who have appeared on the AEW programming mm-hmm. fall on the WWE side of the ledger, so... 21, Ilya Dragunov, and 20, Dragon Lee. So, uh, Dragunov, from originally WWE NXT UK, you know, has been doing such great stuff. I'm about to say, I know what you're all thinking, what's NXT UK? (laughs) I enjoyed that program, did you not watch it? Oh, no, I did. Okay. But, like, at the same time, like, WWE didn't care about it. Correct, yeah, it was not treated with reverence or respect. Which is sad, because... Two of WWE's all-time title reigns outside of this Roman Reigns reign mm-hmm. happened in NXT UK. Absolutely. And it's kind of just ignored. Well, and, and both of the yeah. people's names have been wiped from the history books, too. Yep. I hope one of them comes back, but we'll see how well, that goes. Well, nothing you can do with Bray. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, so uh, Ilya Dragunov, like I said, he did great work against Walter in NXT UK, but his stuff that he's uh, been doing at the top of NXT proper... Yeah. Has has really been exciting in my view, uh, and and it's helped evolve multiple characters. Mm. But uh, Dragon Lee is the one that really surprised me because at the beginning of this year he was still linked up with his Oof. brothers uh, elsewhere. Lisco. Yeah, exactly, Andrew Lisco elsewhere. But him signing with WWE has really Elevated his uh, name name value. That and I love, <laughs> I love that we always try to to get that uh, Rey Mysterio dust rubbed off on this any luchador, <laughs> every luchador. Not not even luchador, just anyone from Mexico. Oh, true. Like, yeah, like it doesn't even have to be a luchador anymore. Yes, like because we tried it with uh, Alberto Del Rio. Yep, yep. God, that didn't work. Right. Uh, we Sin Cara. Sin Cara. Yeah, of course, Sin Cara. Yeah. Uh, Kalisto. Yep. Yep. And now, actually, um, every member of the Lucha House Party. Oh, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> at one point or another, all, all three of them at some point. So, um, on back to the AEW side, nineteen through sixteen. Oh, so we begin with Jeff Hardy, a forever over fella. We move on to Jay White, who, in my view, this week has really jumped up the the, the say, list. When you, you know you're a big deal when you're beating John Moxley. That is for sure. So Will Ospreay at seventeen and sixteen is Kenny Omega. Much like the Hangman, I feel like his stock has fallen recently. Now, and I mean that long before the diverticulitis. Yeah. Um, because it's not it's not the being out with uh, issues, injuries. but it's 
it's just it it puzzles me that both Hangman and Page have or Hangman Omega. Page and, and and Kenny Omega have fallen from prominence so strongly. But like I said, Jeff Hardy is a guy who I don't I'm think about to say he's perma over. It doesn't exactly. It doesn't yeah, as long as he's breathing oxygen, he's <laughs> getting the biggest point of the biggest. And honestly, that. even when he stops breathing oxygen, God forbid, that's no time soon. <laughs> exactly. Like people are still gonna be like, man, that Jeff Hardy guy was great. That's Thank true. God he existed. Yeah. On the on the Kenny Omega and Hangman thing, like I, yeah, they're not as over as they they were. Like let's say last year for yeah, example. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I do think it's like part of the reason is just. I think Kenny Omega is too like unselfish for his own good. Yeah, absolutely. He's a self. He seems to be selfless as a yeah. as a person. And I think that uh, the only person that's really, in my opinion, gotten help from the Don Callis family storyline is Don Callis. Yeah. So as much as I want p- 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 Powerhouse and Kyle Fletcher and Takeshita and uh, Sammy, all, all of the all the people within it almost feel like they're playing second fiddle to the manager, and I don't like that. Yeah. Well, listen, when the upside is by proxy, they're getting booed to all hell. That's true. That's true. So, like, even I'm hoping that even when Don vanishes, whenever that may mm-hmm, be, mm-hmm. that those 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 boos will still exist. Absolutely. So. Jay White, like I said, just this past week. It's the Switchblade era. Just this week, he he showed me more than he did for that entire month when he hijacked the world title. He showed me more than they did when they made believe pretend time that he wasn't going to wrestle MJF at the pay per view. He showed me more just this week than any time this year, and that's what really gave me faith that. I, well, faith might be the wrong word, hope. It gave me hope that Jay White will go to the Continental Classic Finals, go up against Eddie Kingston, and then take his dreams, his hard work, his life's work from him, Mm. and, uh, yeah, do some great heel work. Because in my mind, he will win all three of those straps and then instantly hand the Ring of Honor World and New Japan Openweight titles over the guns. Not in a, you uh, you have these, but in a, you hold them like... Paul Heyman holds Roman Roman's Paul's. title, okay. and it just will. I Damn, think it, was juice was an injured. Yeah, that would be great. For oh, him. absolutely. Yeah, and so uh, yeah, I just have faith in Jay White. And speaking of Will Ospreay, on this well, on, let me bracket, talk about yes, White for a second. yes, yeah, because I don't, I don't think all that at all. But I, so I, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with you. I think uh, he's showed me more in this, uh, this tournament than he has in the uh, world title program mm-hmm. he had the month prior. Right. Right. I also think he shouldn't have been in that world title program just at that time. I feel like he went from losing the tag title, uh, what, match? Mm -hmm. Once that was like a few weeks before. Okay, I'm not wrestling for the world title. I'm like, wait, where did this transition? Well, that's part of the problem behind losing the the rankings. Yeah. So, yes, could the rankings bite you when you you have a guy like a Wardlow forever on top? I guess. But at least you have a justification for putting a person in the title picture. Yeah. And... Like it, it also didn't help that FTR was uh, at the top of the rankings for what a year, like forever, yes. a year, year and a half. Yes. Before they were like, oh uh, yeah, right, we probably should get them a title match. I guess they probably should win. Yes. Like so, that, that's always been my my thing with the rankings. Like they're they're a cool concept, but if no one's keeping up with them, it doesn't. It kind of defeats the purpose. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I, I like Jay White. I don't think he's winning the Continental Classic. I do think it should be Eddie, just because the story they're telling makes sense. I understand Eddie Kingston's like probably the most tragic character in wrestling. Well, I think it's the the tragic loss is what it amuses me about yeah. behind it. Like, because the the moment he put both of his titles up for grabs, I thought, oh, he's winning. And it wasn't until this past week when Switchblade won, I was like, oh, this could be a fun spoiler. Yeah, if I mean, you will. Listen, I, I get it. It, it. it would be fun, and if they do that, I'm not gonna be mad. Yeah, I just don't. At this point in time, from what I'm seeing, well, first of all. We don't even know who's on going to the Blue League. We, yeah, of we course. We assume it's Eddie. Of course, yeah. I, I could be Danielson, could be anybody. I, I don't say know. it could be Claudio. Yeah, for sure. It could be Brody. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm, it, I'm not saying it's a, a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it's, it's just not, I assume. Yeah, so I'm the best. But yeah, so you were talking about Will Ospreay. Yeah, no. Uh, so when you have a homegrown, hometown hero in Wembley Stadium mm-hmm. against a rock star, a legitimate rock like star, a, a, a dude who 
brags that his band played to what was it, eighty thousand something ticket buyers. Right. However you want to look at it, it's it's and here's the other thing. In my perfect world, the main event of All In Wembley Two mm -hmm. would be Will Ospreay challenging Swerve Strickland for the world title. That's that's that. that's my perfect world. But um, my point is, Will Ospreay. I'm so glad he signed with AEW. Me too. And I think that his choice is very conducive to keeping relationships good because he, along with Mox and others, have that well, you can still work for New Japan thing going on in it. And so I, I like which, that a lot. Which would make a lot of sense because New Japan's put a lot of stock in him. Mm -hmm. He's also put a lot of stock in New Japan. Correct. Which I know no one talks about because... He's a person. Well, he even said that he even said that himself. He, when he uh, talked about his signing, mm -hmm. he was like, "Well, I got to finish up with these guys because they believed in me. I believe in them. It's you know about team effort." Yeah, I'm about to say we're unified, man. Absolutely, and, and that's part of what makes pro wrestling so great, man. Just every, if everyone helped each other, we'd actually be. It's so funny because I was listening to Eric Bischoff earlier today talk about how oh, when is working together ever worked? I'm like, will you please stop? <laughs> and uh, didn't he work together with someone for Collision and Career? Of course, it was New Japan. Yeah, we're with New Japan, right? Of course, it was New Japan. Uh, it's it's just that's how it goes. You 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 talk crap when you want to talk crap, and you ignore the truth when you want to. Okay. So I'm gonna pop over back to the WWE side and okay. talk about the next four: Bobby Lashley at 19, Solo Sokoa at 18, 17 is Carmelo Hayes, and 16 is Finn Balor. When I talk about these fellas, so they're all, with the exception of Hayes, they're all very much in that Roman Reigns orbit. So, Balor has wrestled Roman, Solo has helped Roman keep his title, and when I think of Bobby Lashley, I forever see him as like a top challenger type of fella. For sure. Even though he's supposed to be getting booed right now, him and, and the, it is not the, the Street Profits, it's not going to work. Because they literally put the three most popular guys on the planet together and said, okay, hate everyone them. hate them. Yeah, no, it, it's not going to work. It's... Yeah. This is the opposite of the original New Day. Yeah. So the original New Day was supposedly supposed to be getting cheered while they're being corny as all get out. Yeah. And so they get booed. These guys who are being cool as all, cool I mean, as all hell. yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is <laughs> ironic. I like that. Uh, is that you? You can't hate them. Yeah. It's it's literally impossible. Like even when they cheat, like they boom for three seconds and they go, okay, we like it. Don't even care. Yeah. I'm about to say like those. Most what sustained booze they were getting was when they beat up Rey Mysterio. Right. Not even all of the LWO. It was just Rey Mysterio. For sure. So Solo Sokoa has. So I I hate the name Sokoa just to put that out there, because of the idea that he and the Usos are brothers. It's like it just bugs me. But <laughs> regard. Well, I'm just saying. You know. Fair enough. It's it, it'd be like Rick and Scott showing up and one of them being Rick. Uh, Called by a Rick name. Recliner. Yeah, Rick I like that, yeah. And, and it just bugs me, that's all. Um, but my point is, ever since his call up to the, the big show, <laughs> not Paul White, he has been treated as nothing but a worthy person. Yeah. And I love that. I just think that that's the, the way to go. To the, to the tribal throne and whatnot. Which, is, which, which I love Jimmy's response Jimmy. to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say, Jimmy Uso has been phenomenal this year. Like, Especially with how the year started, I did not have high hopes for what they were going to do with him. And now, well, not after WrestleMania, I mean. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was assuming after Mania is a new year. Yeah, I get that. That's how the video games treat it, too. Yeah. Um, also, about the last name thing, I will say it kind of is the same logic for, like, the Lexus King thing for me. So, like, why he's not just Brian Pillman Jr. in, in here. He's trying to make a, a name for himself, not coach. Sure. And it's like, fine. It, it Like, it's not the end of the world. It yeah. just... He, it's so clearly like it's the same thing with Brian Pillman Jr. You, you'll look at him, you see Brian about, Pillman. I'm about to say they all look alike, so I, I get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's not it's not the biggest of big deals. Yeah. Uh, it just it just bug, bugs me. Yeah. Uh, but um, moving on to Carmelo Hayes, this guy has Hello. he has Damn. grown so much, Woo. and I am so looking forward to the minute it gets revealed that he is Trick's attacker. Because I, I see no other payoff for this. I, I was about to say, I'm, I was, so at first I thought it was Lexus King, and I'm like, eh, okay. And then, like, he said, oh, no, I just did this for, for a spotlight in the cloud. I'm like, oh, so it is 
so it will be mellow, and then they are really dragging it out. So yes. I'm, I'm trying to figure out when they're going to reveal this. Uh, in my mind, it's going to be when, I, whether it's New Year's Eve or some other event, it's going to be on the, the, the it's going to be on the night the trick gets the title shot. Is my guess. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, listen, that match will be fun. When it, oh, when it for happens. sure. I and and when, when we when we get when we get to Trick Williams, whew, whew, got big things to say about that. But I want to transition over to Finn Balor before we jump back over the AEW side and yes. just say that him joining the Judgment Day and them cutting off Adam Copeland's head, holding it in the sky, and being like Edge, you are what was holding us back. Mm. It, I've I've seen nothing but awesomeness come from the Judgment Day. Whether they win or lose, they are just parentally, like, over money. Oh, yeah. my goodness. About to say a license to print money, that Judgment Day faction is. So, something that makes the next batch of AEW names easy to talk about is that three out of the four are one group. So, Billy Gunn, Anthony Bowens, and Max Kessler are 15, 14, 13. <laughs> and number 12 is Adam Cole. Baby! The thing is, and it it blew me away when I was doing the math. I mean, it's not literal math, but the the calculations in my head, it blew me away when I said, Billy Gunn is more over than Kenny Omega. But it just felt right. And then, you know, same goes with... uh, Bowens and Caster. Bowens and Caster. I was like, man, they beat out guys like Will Ospreay and Jay White, Kenny Omega, Jeff Hardy. I was like, but to me, they just... It's just... Just so level. This package deal has been so uh exciting mm-hmm. and th- it has literally changed the course of the way crowds yeah. approached shows yeah. like the, the 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 event where they didn't win the tag titles yeah like people were deflated when they didn't win say, and then like... subsequently when they went on to win the tags it was like oh big time over then my. i mean my goodness when they won the trios that's Ooh. it was money I'd say in that stadium full of 70, 80,000 people, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. But listen, I've been, so I've literally been a acclaimed fan since they started. Like, I liked both Bowens and Caster individually when yes. they were showing up on yeah. Dark because I used to watch Dark constantly. Now you watch Ring of Honor, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Pretty much. It's pretty it's much the same, same thing. thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I watch, watch Ring of Honor for Athena, so, I mean, pretty much. Yeah. But, um, but no, like, so, like, I s- literally saw when they formed. I saw when the scissoring started. Mm-hmm. Like I saw, like when they started to get their rhythm as a as a tag team. I'm sorry. And this is most of this was during the pandemic, so like we yeah it's... didn't know how over they were actually were going to be. Of course, until they started like having crowds and like everyone's like, oh no, we're not going to boo these guys. They're absolutely amazing. Absolutely. But yeah, so number twelve, the man who falls short of the top ten, but Adam Cole, baby, he while being out injured is still such a very important part of the main event picture that is happening right now. Dude, aside from the world champion, he's the most important part. Well, what I was going to say is, to me, he is one of the leading contenders, along with MJF, yeah. um, to be revealed as the bad guy among all bad guys, that being the devil of okay, AEW. Uh, I, I hope that it's neither of them, personally, but I, like I said, they're still both contenders yeah, in my mind. Say. But they're running low on the uh, the overall options there. I think there's only like probably, I want to say three, four reveals that wouldn't be disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I think, especially given all of the internet reports, I see that it will be a contracted wrestler with the company, not a new hire. Yeah, so it won't be Ziggler or Mustafa. Oh my something. goodness, we got to talk about that. Have you yeah. seen the campaign ad for uh, Mustafa? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I the world tour. Oh. I'm telling you, I don't know this for a fact, but I feel like I know it as a fact. Mustafa Lee will be uh, the wrestler of the year next year. Well, I was going to say that he, I believe, is one of the people that reached out to Matt Cardona. Because Cardona said in an interview with Chris Van Vliet that there have been a couple of guys who reached out to him about following his path that he laid Mm. to become... Rich. Well, the rich, yes, I was going to say uh, prosperous, but that's the same general concept. I was about to say, pro wrestling is the same thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to his his, yeah, his journey. I was about to say, uh, just to name a couple of opponents, he's wrestling Robbie X, yep. he's wrestling Mike Bailey. Mike yep. Bailey, he's wrestling Gringo Loco. Yep. 
Honestly, he's those three teasing. matches right here. He's teasing Matt Cardona, Kazuchika Okada, and Alex Shelley. Woo! And those are all matches I want to see. Oh, my God. Those are all matches I'd spend money on. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. And we actually live in an era where you can. Because companies like GCW with Matt Cardona or Total Nonstop Action Wrestling in a very DNA, short order DNA, DNA. Uh, offer their products on streaming Fight TV. Services, yeah. Well, streaming well, services, exactly. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it's just a very exciting time. Uh, what a great world we live in. Over on the WWE side, 15, 14, 13, and 12 fall like this. Trick Williams, Jimmy Uso, Santos Escobar, and Rey Mysterio. So, LWO. The, well, the reason that... I, so, I, those two I kept flip-flopping on, right? Yeah. So, I do believe Ray is always more over... Than anybody you ever it, works with. It's but, the same conversation that we've had. It's the Jeff Hardy effect. Exactly. Well, and the It'll thing is, I do think Santos is more over now after jumping Ray than he was before. Right. But but I still don't think he's overtaken Ray in uh, placement I on the that, list. And I think that's valid. Um, and to be honest, like, he hasn't wrestled Ray yet. So Correct. Yeah, that not, might change. Not not in a yes. I hate you Correct. Capacity. Yes. In a, in, yeah, which is going to make a big difference. Right. But yeah, so number 14, Jimmy Uso. He, for, oh, wrong, wrong Uso. Oh, my bad. So Jimmy Uso. No yeet. Yes, correct. Yeet or not to yeet, that is the difference mm-hmm. between the Usos. But um, Jimmy, to me, for a, a, a greater majority of the year, mm-hmm. was in this big state of limbo. He confused me. But it was actually Roman bestru- bestowing the, the heir to the the throne, the heir to the uh, tribal chief yeah. moniker, over to Solo is and his his selling of it, Jimmy, is what really, really helped put him over the top and actually put him above his brother Solo. Mm. And on the subject of over, Trick Williams, my, my goodness, God. that guy came out of nowhere this year really and did. and and just became one of the standouts within NXT. Yes. Uh, now, granted. I think that a lot of it has to do with the crowd, but that is the case with everybody. But I'm about in, to say that's the point of the list. In the my argument, the guy I give the number one spot to for WB, do you know why I give it to him? Crowd. The crowd. You are correct. Yeah. And so, yeah, trick getting over is just it's it shocked me, but it pleased me yeah. to no end. I was about to say, considering he started out as mellow sidekick, and now... <laughs> yeah, he was definitely the lesser in that yeah. package. Yeah, like, quite literally, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess Trick Williams is there, but Carmelo, hey. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he was just a guy until yeah. he became the guy. Yeah, now it's like Trick Mellow game, I see why Trick's first now. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> like, that man is just... Oh, whew. very, very cool. I am also, just a quick sidebar, Booker, Booker T's ad-libs for the, uh, for, the, uh, mm-hmm. for the theme song, I feel like. Really brings the old facts yes. together. I hope they just add Booker that. T is very helpful. Uh, just with his his mindset, his approach, his his uh, veteran acumen. Yes. So. Yes, when he's not when he's not saying ridiculous junk on NXT. Even then, I like good. his ridiculous junk on a regular. Well, the ridiculous junk is the ad. So yeah. So. Um, really helps out. Oh, my goodness. So, popping back over to the AEW side. 11, 10, 9, and 8. Goes like this. Ricky Starks. Adam Copeland, Brian Danielson, and Chris Jericho. Oh, so the funny thing is, Jericho was much higher on my original draft of this, and then I talked to Josiah, and he convinced me that you know guys who were they were they were all very much in the running. Like a lot of these guys, it and, and even some of the sections could you could literally just flip flop them, and switching around. Yeah, but but Ricky Starks, man, the reason I put him so high is because not only is he amazing, he's so uh, personable, but, and I get it that what I'm about to talk about is not in the calendar year of 2023, but this is really what opened my eyes to his blossoming to the top spot, he's, or the, the high spot he's in now, and that was when he wrestled Maxwell Jacob Friedman at Winter's Coming in 2022. And that momentum oh, that, that was he kept, the last year. Yeah, right, but that momentum he kept after that match, I was like very much a big fan of it. Like I, I just I think Ricky has such a bright upside, whether it is in this company or the other, because there's big rumblings that he may or may not jump over and hang out with his boy Cody. Speaking of people who jumped the ship though, Adam Copeland, 
had has done nothing but look like a big star since the minute he walked in. Yeah. And I mean it's because he is, obviously. Yeah, I'm about to say that helps. And I mean the same can be said for Danielson and Jericho. They they're two guys who are just parentally incapable of not looking like the stars that they are. Because they're they're awesome. I love not much that. Da- Brian Brian Danielson's work and Chris Jericho. I mean, it's Chris Jericho. Yeah. It's it's so hard to it's hard to beat. So over on the WWE side, eleven, ten, nine, and eight. We have Logan Paul, who I never would have thought would be so high on a list, but I mean, he. Anyway, Damian Priest, Dominic Mysterio, again, what the heck, and Kevin Owens. So um, Kevin, not not even he's he is he's actually the outlier of these four because he's the guy because he's an actual wrestler. An, he's an actual wrestler who does great work, so he doesn't stand out at all. But Dominic Mysterio, who's so young in the business, yep. I can't believe that I actually put him like Don Callis. I can't believe I actually put him over Damian Priest, who's Money in the Bank. But the thing is, I think Dominic gets bigger reactions. He does. So that's that's why I had to do it. And Logan Paul again, it's his reactions. It's it's the way that he carries himself that really put him in this this spot to to be so prominent. Prominent, and 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 it's funny t- because uh, there are people. That I've, uh... What? I thought I was going to say something. Oh, you're good. So there are people that, I think Flair, maybe Flair, definitely Bischoff. There are people yeah. on the internet, old people uh, in the business who are like, oh, he's he's just got it. And it, it's hard to argue that, that he doesn't. Yeah. Because he's so, he delivers when it comes to the the, the wrestling product. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's so weird to, to say that. So before I jump back over to... AEW, All Elite Wrestling. I've got to talk about the next group of four on the WWE bracket, the mm-hmm. WWE side, because this the, this group of four was the hardest for me to, to figure out who falls where. Mm. So I did seven, six, five, and four in this way. Seth Rollins, Gunther, Sami Zayn, and Jimmy Uso. Main, of, or main event Jay Uso, not Jimmy yeah, Uso. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mixed I it up too. So the reason this was so hard is because can you believe that this year, 2023, is the same year Sammy got kicked out of the bloodline, yep. main evented a night of WrestleMania, yep. main evented a pay-per-view against Roman Reigns, yep. main event Jey Uso, main I evented... wrestled in Saudi Arabia, which I think is probably the, one of the more impressive... Ex- absolutely, that's another great, uh, big, big, big moment for Sammy. Um, main event Jey Uso, main evented a night of WrestleMania, a yep. SummerSlam, he was in one of the biggest storylines of the, the year. Yep. And that's the reason, the, the the placement of them, that's the reason they both overtook two current champions, Gunther and Seth Rollins. And I couldn't believe... Yeah, is valid. I couldn't believe that I put Gunther over Seth Rollins in the fact that no, okay. he's, Seth is the world champion and Gunther's the IC champion, but the fact is, Gunther's work is just... It's, it's head and shoulders above everything. It's yeah. so... Good. In fact, I almost feel like they didn't even have to introduce a new world championship. If you would have just said Gunther is the Tom Kyle Raw, people would. I believe you. I, I think that you could have almost gotten to that place because that's how well that title has been getting treated. And I actually yeah. like the idea of the Intercontinental title being treated as a top strap, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, unfortunately, none of WWE agrees with you. So. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. So on the AEW side. Seven, six, five, and four goes as such. Samoa Joe, Orange Cassidy, Christian Cage, and John Moxley. Two of these names are a given. John Moxley, Samoa Joe, it's hard to argue. By, by the same but two of these names, yeah. who would have thought, who would have thought in the year of 2023 that the, 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 the man who is the king of sloth style and the man who... Oh, is the patriarch of wrestling. I mean, I, I would have thought that. Well, so, it's and this is no knock on Orange or Christian, but, like, how long ago was it when Orange didn't even wrestle? He was just out there with best friends. I mean, not nearly as long ago as it might seem well, for mean, how that he's been like main eventing. Yeah, yeah, but now he's main eventing pay-per-views with John Moxley. And winning. Exactly. Now he's beating John Moxley for titles. It's like... 
it's 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 just a big uh it's a lot of growth for that guy yeah. and I, I i'm i'm here for it i'm very happy to see the growth of orange cassidy and so there's there's nothing needs to be said about Samoa Joe or John Moxley. They are they're they're the guy. They are John, John Moxley is my favorite modern wrestler. So and Samoa Joe uh, to me he's he's just a guy who always delivers. But when it yeah. comes to Christian, his change from outwork everyone to I worked everyone was the the Absolutely best awesome. change that a character could ever have because he needed that like every human needs oxygen. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm gonna do the same thing I did with WWE here on AEW. I'm going to tell you my top three AEW wrestlers before I tell you my top three WWE wrestlers. For this year, 2023, my top three are as follows. And mind you, this is the list according to Oz, and so I'm allowed to cheat. Number three, Swerve Strickland. Number two, <laughs> Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And number one for the most over with me in AEW is the icon, the man called Sting, and I get it, I get it, I get it. He's 60-some years old, whatever, whatever, but when it comes to me, when it comes to wrestling, Sting is perennially over. I can't not be a fan of that guy, and I think he sold 11,000 tickets. They're even talking about changing the stadium for Revolution just to fit more, you know, behinds every 18 inches, so that tells you how over this man is, that in the year of 2024, or 2023, he's already selling... Uh, in, in, ex in excess of 11,000 tickets for 2024 for a match that hasn't even been announced yet. So mm -hmm. this guy's over. My top three wrestlers for WWE in the year of 2023 are as follows. Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and the number one most over, in my opinion, wrestler in WWE is, you know? Uh, I'm assuming LA Knight. It is <laughs> LA Knight. Yeah. Yeah. So the the thing is that LA Knight, when I booked my WrestleMania a few months ago, was the man that I had winning the Rumble. Now, do I think they're going to do that? Probably not. Definitely not. But the crowd is just so into this man. And the fact is, he needs it. He needs it now. He needs it soon. He needs that push because... He ain't getting any younger. He ain't getting any younger, and he's just he, now. It, it now is the time to strike when the iron is hot, and the argument could be made. He should have did that last year. Well, maybe, but I was going to say when he challenged for the title this year, if they would have strapped him up, I think that it would have been smart. Yeah. But uh, thank you for joining me. I could I could have flown solo on this, but I just like having uh, to bounce actual off. conversation yeah. instead of just talking to my phone. Thank you for watching all year long. Thank you for subscribing all year long. Thank you for being here. I look forward to the channel growing in the year of 2024. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Or if you Actually, this is going out after Christmas. But regardless, okay. yeah, all of the stuff. All and I of hope the you stuff. had a Merry Christmas and Absol Happy New Year. Absolutely. But the, the fact is, in 2024, Mr. Super Oz, the channel, will be growing. So, not only will there be reoccurring guests throughout the year, just like always are with Josiah and Brandon, but Andy will be back like he was for Christmas Day, uh, but he'll be more regular on the channel. Cool. And the channel itself will be going five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because launching in 2024 is, and this is not a mistake this time. Alpha Entertainment Worldwide Reload. Every Wednesday. You will not get one, but you'll get two episodes of the original Alpha Entertainment Worldwide pop-in. But you will be getting two episodes reloaded. Because there are so many wrestling fans that I know that didn't watch because the show was two and a half, three hours pushing my luck with how long I, we were going. So what we're doing in the year of 2024 is we're reloading the 2002 into 2003 episodes of Alpha Entertainment Worldwide. On Wednesdays, you'll get Monday Night Raw at 6.05 from, uh, you know, with Josiah booking. And then at 6.05 p.m., you will get SmackDown. Now, once, possibly twice a month, you will get a pay-per-view on Saturday. So, not only will Mr. Super Oz be five days a week, sometimes it'll be six. Um, but yeah, 
the the goal is to grow the goal is to get the word out the goal is to uh you know get bigger and better than ever and hopefully this works and uh, again thank you yes sir and thank you take care guys